All right, today we're gonna to dive into Binance Labs and some of the projects that are starting to shake loose in that ecosystem. Binance is definitely on the move and it's one that I think you guys need to watch and really keep track of what's happening over in that ecosystem. My name is Paul Barron, welcome back to Tech Path. Let's zoom in on Binance Labs today. There's several projects I wanna to bring to kind of the forefront. The, as you guys know, it's a, a Kickstarter, so to speak, a launch pad, an investment house, an incubator, it's all things to the crypto and metaverse crowd, especially the young developers and developers in general that are starting to build in the space. What's interesting about this group though is we are seeing an array of different types of protocols coming together under Binance Labs, including some pretty big investors. So I think when you see this list, the main thing to really kind of note here is that as Binance grows as an ecosystem, the tie-in to BNB is going to be a very, very intriguing thing. And I'm gonna show you something towards the end of the video that really kind of shows a potential shift that seems to be occurring around Ethereum and Binance, meaning BNB, the token. So let's stay tuned for that. Make sure, make sure and hit the like button if you guys are interested in seeing more content like this. We'd love to get your feedback. All right, so when we do these market movers, the key thing with a market mover, we'll pull together some research. We have some data for you from our CPI. It's not investment advice. This is all about our research, hopefully putting you on your research journey and understanding how this is gonna move forward and maybe putting projects into your portfolio or putting them on your ones to watch list for projects as they start to become something bigger. Let's jump to the first one right here and that is Binance Lab Investing Labs, investing in Binary X uh, to deploy a GameFi product on, of course, the smart chain. And uh, the cool thing here is you, on this particular Binary X, uh, they're developing a, a component called Cyber Dragon, which is a metaverse on-chain gaming, uh, combining elements of DeFi, NFTs, crypto economy, and of course the in-gaming in -gaming environment. We see more and more games going to that type of, I guess, model for blockchain in terms of how people can earn, play to earn, and also in general how you can invest in certain kind of projects. But users can mine and experience dungeon adventure, PVP gaming, uh, trade in the marketplace for land and castles. So you're gonna see that kind of thing with uh, digital assets. And then let me kind of zoom in on this one right here because this is kind of interesting right here. Cyber Dragon has a dual token model involving governance token BN BNX and an in-game token gold as the governance token. BNX is gonna use, be used to vote and participate in the in-game hero NFT lotteries. So there's a lot of that that I think we'll continue to see more and more projects moving in that direction. And if you look at what Cyber Dragon Binary X is doing, Binary X you can invest in their token, but Cyber Dragon, Metaverse on-chain game, great graphics, the game itself, uh, also the whole function of the marketplace, which is a pretty common element that we're seeing more and more. What you don't see often is liquidity mining. And even though you do see staking as potentials on these emerging games uh, and also on these emerging projects, but the whole point here is that with Binary X, they've got a lot going in the right direction as far as the overall graphics, kind of the functionality, whether we actually can start to see some real gameplay, all that kind of things will play into this. I wanted to jump to their Twitter account. You can kind of see a little bit about the development of the community, which I always register as one of the key things that I'm looking for. And as you can see here, play to earn uh, BSC powered by Binary X. You can get to them right there on where you're uh, on the website side. And of course, right here is what was interesting to me is the 96,000 followers on Twitter. That's typically a good sign for an emerging game is to have anything over 20,000 you know, Twitter followers, that's a, that is a, a real community that's starting to develop around these. And that is really kind of the big, I think the big key in many of the gaming um, blockchain elements that you might be looking at in terms of investments or play to earn or looking at digital assets, looking at that community and really understanding how uh, strong and how powerful it is, is going to be very key to the project. Let's look at their chart right here on CoinMarketCap uh, real quick. They're trading 68.31 currently. This is a three month, so you can kind of see that that big rise and then this, uh, this fall off that we saw during uh, December. This may be a good point of entry for this one. At least I'm looking at it. 
Uh, it is on the Binance Smart Chain, so you are going to do a MetaMask uh, conversion there to be able to purchase this. And the cool thing about this, again, as I said, is we'll continue to see more and more development on this. Because Binance Labs is behind this, I think that's a big factor in terms of success because it's not like all of them are going to succeed, but definitely when you see a lot of the kind of people that get involved in these projects when they go into Binance Labs, it's a pretty well vetted uh, process for an incubator, especially around blockchain. Our next one is League of Kingdoms, which is developing a Web 3.0 gaming system. Uh, in League of Kingdoms, players can build kingdoms, lands they own. Players will also develop a, str uh, a strong kingdom, the alliances. It's a whole process of building levels, research to raise an army. You know, it's a typical uh, style of you know combatant game that you see here through uh, blockchain tech. They call it LOK allows landowners to monetize their investment, et cetera. Very similar. One of the things that I wanted to highlight here was the uh, statement from Bill Chin, who's the head of uh, Binance Labs, the fund. Web3, always looking for that sector, looking forward to growing it. And then um, after building an in-gate NFT marketplace and setting up infrastructures, LOK will go through a DAO transition. Now, DAO transition is what is interesting to me in some of these programs because a DAO, Decentralized Autonomous Organization, means that there's no head. There's no real organization that's running. It becomes a community-owned operational entity from a blockchain status. That becomes really interesting. I think we're going to see a lot more DAOs in 2022 and more of those styles of where you get, you basically become, you know, it's a community. It's, it's much more like a municipality where you're voting on you know, the governance of what's happening in that particular game. Another statement here is said, the founding team has launched the game in early Ju July 2020 and has been focused on building the product as a result of the game's daily active users around 18,000. I know that doesn't sound like a lot when you see the millions that are out there on projects like Axie or something of that nature. But remember, these are early stage. This is how Axie got rolling. Obviously, Axie being ETH, not Binance, but... The whole point is, is that if there is enough community to really kind of go around these, there's some opportunity here. The other thing that was kind of cool here, League of Kingdoms, uh, this news article right here, and according to developers, over 25,000 players per day. This was uh, updated information on uh, League of Kingdoms, and they can acquire land. This is the kind of whole thing. Local uh, holders get to propose, vote, and stake for yield. In addition, they'll be able to use Loka to buy or upgrade on the NFT. So it gets back in to what I've talked about before, and that is this whole area of blockchain digital assets. And I know a lot of people think about investment from a very basic, straightforward model. And that is you go to an exchange, you invest in a token, you watch it go up the charts or down the charts. That's a pretty typical benign process of investing. What I want you to try to wrap your head around is getting into digital assets. Because as we get into digital assets, there are going to be some pretty significant games, and I'll give you some basic examples. In most cases on tokens, getting a 2x, 3x, 5x, is you, you have to get really lucky on these. And what we are finding in a lot of these emerging games that, that have a lot of fanfare around them, maybe like uh, a League of, or, or in something like this, like a League of, League of uh, Kingdoms, but you also look at projects that are out there like Big Time. You look at projects like Star Atlas, many of those kind of elements that were there. We're seeing things like guilds starting to acquire assets for a very good reason. One is because of the acquisition and the potential for the investment itself to 2x, 3x, 5x. And that's the difference. I think if you look back at what we talked about in our Big Time video, um, what was interesting to me about that is how quickly those VIP passes accelerated from about 700 bucks to around 1600 bucks in a matter of a couple of weeks. Those are the kind of gains you're going to get. And remember, this is only going to get more valuable, especially from a utility aspect when it comes to an NFT, if the game becomes popular and if the community becomes larger, which that's where the DAO component really plays into this because as the community starts to grow and build, so does the game and the value of all those digital assets. So that is, to me, one of the cool things around uh, projects like uh, what we're seeing on League of Kingdoms. All right, further on, I want to jump in here. And just to show you a quick screenshot, this is their 
uh, their website. So great graphics, you know, here I'll do a little quick play for this one so you can kind of see what's happening. And, and this is, you know, again, these are the kind of games I feel like have good potential and where they could be going. And we, with these kind of graphics, I like that because it does give uh, even more power to what's happening in projects like this, just in terms of awareness, community, their Discord group's fairly large. They're using Medium, of course, and then they're doing Facebook and Twitter, which we've kind of just gone through. Here's their Twitter. Let's jump up real quick. You can kind of see they're at 17,000. So this is a young project, and I do have some sentiment on this one that I want to bump to. All right, so what you see here is a, a developing community. And let me kind of zoom in on that for you guys a little bit. 17,500, not bad, but not a massive community. And of course, this kind of aligns very, very similarly to what they're talking about in terms of their daily average users. And this, the article was saying 25, the 18,000 was in the Binance Labs listing. So you can kind of see that the growth is happening there. And then when you see the Twitter audience starting to really develop in unison with that, that's one thing that I'm always kind of curious about is Twitter, crypto Twitter seems to be one of the most accurate ways to really determine a popularity of any kind of project, whether it's DeFi, you know, a, you know, a big a layer one project or into these gaming projects in the metaverse. What I'm always skeptical of is when I see, you know, 100,000 Twitter followers and 7 million, you know, game players. Why are they not involved in the community? Maybe that it is because the game itself is the community, but for the most part, a lot of the information is dropped on Twitter for many of these game projects, as well as Medium for that point. But it's also kind of a home base for a lot of people to really kind of get to. So that is uh, an interesting thing. Thing in, in terms of just being able to watch. One thing I want to jump to here is, uh, and I want to jump back to, is binary. Binary has, binary X, meaning the token, trades under BNX. I wanted to pull up the, uh, just the ranking on this one. So this again was trading at 7047. Uh, the crypto power index ranking was uh, current is 7318 and 7129 on the amplification. Uh, which is good. Anything ranking in the 70s for uh, typical projects, that's always a good sign when I'm seeing that kind of movement. And also with this one, our buy uh, and monitor rating was 7.6, which is just really one of our, our areas that we kind of go into. All right, so as we get into further elements inside uh, Binance, I want to jump to one of these projects right here, which is Elfin Kingdom. And this one is interesting because it's got we've got some sentiment data on this one as well. So Elfin Kingdom, again, strategic investor, Elfin Kingdom. So they're going to provide a gaming platform for developers and gamers that's easy to use and delivers fun experience. I'm interesting about developers tying into this. So this would be uh, kind of an interesting offering on the BSC uh, program. But it's going to launch a test version of the game on Binance uh, Chain Testnet shortly, where players will be able to capture Elfins in battle has a lot of similarities to something else we all know. Uh, also, the farming option will be able to go live where users can stake and earn rewards. Again, I think we're gonna continue to see a lot of movement in uh, to that area. And when you combine DeFi, which is staking, into this, eventually you're going to see a really different, and I think he, uh, when I talk about Brad Lim, their investment director for uh, labs over there is he already sees this movement toward free-to-play as being a thing. And because free-to-play is going to be such a big factor, having DeFi components in it, such as staking, such as uh, additional rewards, digital assets, uh, those kind of things are going to be really big on a lot of these projects. When you look at their website, this again goes back to a lot of, you know, Axie look and feel. But I wanted to jump over here to the stake because they're staking currently BNB. You can earn Elfin. Eventually, my guess is this is going to have some sort of cash out from BNB. You've got staking BUSD, also earning well. You can also do it with USDC and then USDT and then also uh, GGG. So I like the fact that there's a little bit of flexibility here in the staking its itself, uh, even though I should call it its elf, uh, but itself. 
And the uh, community, again, is pretty strong. This one going in at 55,800. This one actually has some sentiment. Let me jump to that one real quick. Yeah, so right here is Elfin Kingdom. Their sentiment between November and uh, December. Not a bad move up, but not necessarily performing drastically, meaning it's a 6814, uh, which is a good rating. It's not a great rating in December. Uh, we don't have enough data whether or not this, you know, obviously the token's not available yet, but enough data out there to where we would even recommend this just yet. But it is one of these projects that I want to watch because mainly because of their financial and their monetization ecosystem of how this might potentially work. So again, another of the Binance system that I think you should be looking at. And remember, Binance Labs, they are dropping these projects left and right. They have these seasons and that's where most of these projects start to, you know, it's like an incubator or a Y Combinator style thing for startups. They'll come in, they submit, Binance jumps in, they pull in usually a variety of investors that will get involved into it and then bang, you've got something in terms of a development team. This is the next one that I wanted to jump to and this is multi-chain. Now multi-chain is a little different play. Um, they're going to get financing support from Binance Labs, and they're also building a partnership with Binance Smart Chain. So good on both ends. And then look at this, 60 million financing round for multi-chain. Uh, remember, this one is formerly known as AnySwap, and I'll explain a little bit about what it is. But basically, it provides interconnecting infrastructure for mainstream public blockchains, including Ethereum, BSC, Avalanche, Moonriver, etc. Total value locked right now on multi-chain, formerly... Uh, as I said, AnySwap is now uh, in the ex in terms of users, 300,000 and more than 5 billion with over 100, or excuse me, 1,000 crypto assets circulating. So I think this shows, again, good growth in these swap projects that are out there and really growing. Multi-chain is now a cross-chain infrastructure that connects more public blockchains and crypto assets than anyone else with lower transaction fees, bridging the time, security levels, all that good stuff. Multi-chain is also building a stronger partnership with BSC to promote multi-chain as its recommended bridge. That, to me, is the big key element right here. Being a recommended bridge for inside the BSC ecosystem will be huge because you will start to see a lot of users. And remember, Binance is still one of the largest trading volume platforms out there. And just in general, when you look at how many projects are coming live, on uh, Binance, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty in, insane. If you look at their website, cross-chain router protocol, you know, really all of it pretty traditional. The one that's interesting to me is right here is allows users to swap between any two chains freely. It'll reduce free fees and make it easier to move between chains. This right now I think is a big factor in overall use of blockchain because we do have that problem and I think everybody kind of does the musical chairs process right now of trying to gain access to certain tokens. Maybe you're trying to stake something over on Axie. You know all of the things you have to do to kind of jump through hoops to do these unless you're buying just straightforward tokens on, you know, an exchange. You know, if you've got, whether you're buying Bitcoin or one of the top 10, you know, uh, blockchain projects, Maybe you're just over on Coinbase and that's the route you take. Those are very easy, but the typical gains are not as crazy as what you see in many of these emerging projects and many of the emerging projects that start to get listed, especially if they start to list on other exchanges. So imagine when we start to see listings that appear over what was maybe just available on a pancake swap or something through a DEX and all of a sudden now it's on Binance, or maybe it's now being listed on Kraken or on KuCoin. Those kinds of bumps are real uh, for these projects, and they do kind of get themselves a lot of notoriety. Figment is the last one I wanted to touch on, and this one is another one that is kind of unique. Uh, this one, though, is interesting because it's a, it's a Series C financing, um, which to me is even bigger because of the fact that Binance is getting that far down into the uh, investment side of things. And uh, these guys are, let me kind of explain what, how would I explain this? Because it's, they're an interesting one. It's much like an investment house that is designed to help Web 2 developers transition to Web 3 and an ecosystem for those Web 3 developers. Because remember, 
One of the biggest challenges, and I think this is why Binance connected with Figment, one of the biggest challenges that we'll see in blockchain in the next, really in the next year to two years, is going to be the availability of developers. And here's why. The scale in which all of this pro these projects are happening, remember you've got ETH over here trying to flip to 2.0, the amount of, of brain power and developer power to make that happen is gonna be massive. Then you've got projects like Avalanche and you know the many other projects that are starting to soak up that developer talent. And then you have all of GameFi and what's happening on the metaverse also soaking up a lot of that talent. Someone at some point is gonna to need to develop a Web2 transition process for all those developers that have been building projects in Web2 for the last two decades because the likelihood is those tech stacks, that engineering mind capability that is already in Web2 could transition. The key is gonna be how do you do it and how do you coalesce around those? So they're basically taking a pioneering role in supporting the Web3 ecosystem and focus on providing proof of stake protocol staking and other critical blockchain infrastructure research. The company recently also explained its, uh, its reach into the DAP middleware layers, which I think is gonna be the part, and pro uh, providing entrepreneurs and developers an easy way to build products and services on proof of stake blockchains. That to me is probably one of the most unique projects out there, Figment, Prime for token holders. You can, of course, do a ton of different types of staking applications. Look at their staking protocols right here. You've got Algorithm, the ones I'm interested in are Audius, Avalanche, um, there's uh, Band Protocol, Cardano, of course, Casper, uh, Celo, Cosmos, and then eFlow, Helium. So you kind of get the point here is they're really trying to get into building an ecosystem of both developers and, and kind of this friendly environment and also access to capital for staking and liquidity. So again, another interesting play by what's happening with Binance. And just to kind of bring this home on this one, uh, NYC-based blockchain infrastructure services, this is the 110 that they raised in the Series C uh, at a 1.4 billion post-money valuation. The round was, this is Toma Bravo, uh, with participation of CounterPoint, Morgan Stanley, Binance Labs, obviously, which we just mentioned. Um, then you've got Parify, uh, and the other one is CMS Holdings and also B Capital Group. Both of those are big boys. And look at the last one there, Starkware. So if you're not following what's happening on Starkware, you should be. Because a lot of what we're going to see in this transition, especially on these projects that really need a lot of these kind of... Um, hybrid interfaces to communicate with each other. And remember, most of what's being built for blockchain right now is the exact similarities to what was being built for the internet in the early 2000s. So it is literally paving the roads in the super highway of the metaverse and where blockchain is gonna go. So I think that's gonna be a big one. Last statement here is, is it builds Web3 developer communities, which they're gonna need uh, via the Learn, education program and then makes it simple for developers to launch applications and manage smart contracts via the data hub platform. So again, this gets back to the point of trying to bring the 2.0 developer and tech stack concepts over to 3.0. So you can kind of see where all this is going. You look at uh, some other things that are, I've got so much going on here with this. I wanted to jump over here quickly to uh, Binance. Before I do that, I want to jump over here to this whale movement right here. All right, nearly 262 million ETH moves to Binance as Ethereum dips beneath 4,000 again. I want you to look at this whale movement right here. Let's zoom in on that one right there. So 262 million worth of ETH tokens have now been moved in Binance recent hours. Ethereum dips below 4,000. Mark as the entire cryptocurrency market is, is falling, as we know. But this, to me is what we've been talking about here on this channel around Ethereum is that we may see some short-term pressure on ETH, especially in what kind of innovation that is happening with BSC and especially around Binance Labs because Binance Labs essentially is the farming ecosystem for developing all these game fight. Remember, if you're sucking up all that, all that talent into games, metaverse, DeFi, projects like this uh, that I just talked about there with Figment. 
it really starts to put pressure on the rest of the ecosystem. The one, and the biggest ecosystem that's out there is Ethereum. So if you're in that kind of scenario, and I still believe that there's probably some challenges with things like Cardano and some of the projects that have been struggling this year because of just pure talent availability, being able to get to that level. So when you have that and you look at what uh, this little move right here with 265 million, I mean, it isn't massive, but it is definitely a continued migration of people potentially looking at some different assets and of course Binance being a big part of that. BNB, uh, let's pull up right here. I wanted to just pull up a general chart on BNB really quickly because they had some sentiment that was holding pretty strong right here. This, the last one we pulled was back on early December. Uh, the sentiment was holding at 79.88 with an amp of 75.02. So kind of a upward and sideways uh, drop action. Sentiment dropped, of course, when we saw this down and we anticipated we were going to see some sideways action, which we did. Uh, that was 76.37 and an amp of 75.21. Definitely moved right along with what we're doing on the CPI, uh, which matches up against how some of these tokens can move. And then you had this little bit of movement right here uh, just this week, which was right there from the 545 to the 570 mark. And then this little crypto fall off that we're dealing with right now uh, as filming uh, this episode. So the point I'm getting at is, is that it has a lot of similarities to what's happening with ETH. So I'm, get, I'm just curious as to whether or not, and I'd like to know you guys, if, if maybe you're in the comments below, if you have even considered maybe if you're an ETH holder, would you look at something that is in a, in a project like BNB that could potentially be tied to all these kind of new projects out there, especially as, as Binance Labs really starts to flourish. I'm just kind of curious if anybody's planning on doing something like that. Because I have looked at this and potentially right now have a, have a target for liquidating a certain amount of ETH and repositioning into BNB. So in, interesting is something to keep in mind on as you guys develop your strategies for 2022. And of course, you're listening in over on the podcast right now. The best thing to do is jump over here to the YouTube channel. It is the place. Make sure, like, and subscribe. It's the number one thing you can do. And also join the Diamond Circle. It's easy and it's free. If you're new to the channel, it is where we do drop a lot of insights, but it's also where we do a lot of giveaways and digital assets assignments to our followers and friends. Make sure and stay tuned right here on all the great stuff from TechPath. If you want to reach me on Twitter, just catch me on Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time.